Welcome to River of Life Ministry. We're glad that you'll be able to watch this today's service, and we just know that God will bless you through it. God, we just give you all the glory this morning. We just love you. We worship you. We give you praise and honor. Father, I pray now, God, that you just speak to each one of us by the spirit of the living God, that we each hear the word in our own language, that you take it out by the spirit, God, and that we hear what you have for each of us. We love you and worship you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. High five. Yay. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Wow. Okay. So, um. Wow. Yeah. I love how the Spirit of God moves. I love how He works. I love Him. I love how He brings us into places that we probably could never enter on our own. I love corporate worship. I think it's amazing. I love my personal worship too, but just to be in the midst of all of you guys just singing and moving and expressing how you uh, might not do this at home, but how you express God in your own corporate, per your own corporate worship. Listen, if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3 this morning, all the Bibles are the same, and here they are, New King James versions, and um, somebody's going to holler out the page number because we all want to be able to see what, what the Word of God says versus just what you hear me say. Amen. 1344. 1344 is the page number, and um, I am going to start in verse 14, but that's, not my main focus, but when I get to the main focus, what I believe God has given me, that is when I'll probably start um, going a little bit further. But So Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 14. Appreciation of the mystery is what is titled. It says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So let me say that again. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father. <laughs> it's the, the accomplishment of the cross is what's before this. So for this reason, the accomplishment of the cross to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from who the whole family in heaven, so there's a family in heaven, <laughs> yeah, and earth is named. And he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, that he would grant you and me and each of us according to the riches of his glory. Not what we think we deserve, not what we think we need to be, not what we need, think we need to be doing, but according to his riches and his glory. To be strengthened through, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So in other words, it is all about God. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't matter if we think that he's not because he is, and he knows who he is because he's the great I am. Right. Amen. Amen. And so if he says that, um, that he would grant you and me according to the riches of his glory so that we would be strengthened with his might through the Holy Spirit, so again, remember I talk about filters a lot. I tell you that if you're full of anger, bitterness, judgment, or criticalness, you're going to filter everything that you do through that filter that you have. And the most important filter that we need to be filtering everything through is Jesus Christ and the love of God. And all of a sudden, all of your anger, and you're about ready to spit it out, and all of a sudden you see the presence of the Lord, you know him, and your flesh wants to speak it all, but as you filter through him, it comes out different on the other side that will edify, comfort, and build up the church in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't think that um, God wants us going around pointing fingers, condemning, and just uh, and, and, and hurting Christians and hurting people. And I realize that it happens, so please, if that's happened to you, please forgive them. Because even Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. They think they're doing right, but in reality they're not. And you'll find that their following is very little because people can't handle that constant pointing the finger. Yeah. he's the only one that can bring judgment he tells us to judge righteously to judge righteously you know there's, there's a difference and through the righteousness of God the judgment comes because of love no other reason not because where I think Tammy needs to be and so I'm you know I'm going to convict her through my Holy Spirit which is not holy but according to 
the riches of his glory. We want that to move in this body of Christ. We want this to move in our lives. We want to understand that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are greater than our ways. Amen. And he has a great plan. And the first thing that I want to do, my, my flesh wants to examine you and look for the crookedness in you. But my heart is connected to Christ. And so I pray that I look through the eyes of Jesus and look what you don't see and pull it forward, that you are wonderfully and beautifully made, that you are the head and not the tail, and that God has a plan for you. And you might put your head down today, but I pray God rises, uh, rises up tomorrow because I've encouraged you. Amen. That doesn't mean that everything that comes for me is going to sound encouraging. But I pray that it's always filtered through the love of God because you'll know the motive is love. That doesn't mean I'm going to condemn you. You have enough of that in your life. But will I bring you truth and love? I will, and it won't sting in your spirit because you'll know that it's truth. And because the spirit of truth, who is Jesus Christ, lives inside of us, when truth comes, we can receive it. Right? Jan to this day says to me, you used to drive me crazy when you would talk about the motive of your heart, the motive of your heart, the motive of your heart. Every time we'd get in the car, you would tell me that God told you to check the motive of your heart. And that made me come up to a higher accountability and I had to start checking the motive of my heart. And I didn't want to because I wanted to be able to just flow in me. And you know, when you stop and actually check the motive of your heart, you realize that sometimes your heart is deceitful above all things. Amen. So when God says check the motive of your heart, sometimes you go to send a text and you erase it because you realize that the text that you're sending, you're either being a right fighter or you're just going to hurt somebody. You might be right, but that doesn't mean that God always wants us to be right fighters. There was a time back in 2011 when the very first time that um, the rehab came to this community, and of course, me not knowing a whole lot of stuff about stuff, um, I had ministered for uh, a few hours to many of the people that came. In those days, we had anywhere from 15 to 44 people here from there. And so God used them to bring us up in the things in many ways, especially me, because he birthed prophecy and he birthed ministry and he brought me home and he rose me up with the people and that's what happens in our lives. So sometimes when you think that the person that's in your life just rubs you the wrong way, maybe you're a grain of sand in the mouth of a clam. Amen. And so with that, just rubbing against you, you turn into a pearl. <laughs> Some of my hardest, my hardest times as a pastor, it's been so hard on me, but I know that it's the mouth, of, I'm in the mouth of a clam and I'm in the grain of sand that's being perfected to become the pearl of God. <laughs> and when I look at that instead of them, I start to focus on the things that God has for us. And so going back to being a right fighter, um, I had said some things and, um, in ministry, and they had went back and said, well, you know, I don't know about this Pastor Joyce, but, you know, God just really moves to her, and, and, um, and I had made this statement. And so I got um, called by um, the director at the time, and this was a long time ago, so things are completely different today. And so it was about Christmas time, and, and mind you, they uh, came in, in September. And um, I'm like, God, I know what I said was truth. It was right. What do you want me to do? Because I'm going to go and I'm going to meet with these people. And the Holy Spirit said to me, because I waitress most my whole life since high school, I love how he talks to us in parables and personable. I'm sure that he talks to Matt when he's working on cars. Matt knows cars inside out, diesel engines, and he can probably make a sermon out of it because that is part of who God created Matt to be. My husband, he's a, a, a master of many, many trades. He's pouring it into many, many people, and he can take his life experience and he can pour into all of us because Jesus speaks to us in parables as well. And so he spoke to me, and he said, put a, an apron over your arm and go in as a servant. So I knew what that meant. I was to go to serve them. Even though I knew that I was right and I could go in there and say, but well, this is the Bible, and this is what the Bible says, and this is this, and this is this. That's not why God sent me in there first to humble me, to test my heart, to be sure that even though I knew I was right, I wasn't going to go in there and press, push my agenda. Push the truth on somebody that didn't even know what it was yet. 
give them meat when they, they can't even drink milk yet. And then they're going to choke on it and maybe they'll never be able to eat again. So because of that, I went in with the Lord. I said, man, God, I don't know. You know, these people are going to crucify me, you know. And I, don't, I, I don't, just don't know, but it was so cool because I went in there because God called me to go in there as a servant. And I sat down and I listened to them. And, and, and I said, how can I help you? What can I do? I love these people. I love these people. I love these broken people. And I'm, I'm on your team. What can I do to help you? We were, we are on the same team, but two different hands pushing two different things. If I can put it that way. And because of that meeting and because of that humbleness and because of that, I was able to witness to them. By explaining where my heart is and what God has showed me, it was the coolest thing. Yes, I listened to their part and their, their vision as well. But God opened a door for ministry. I never even said anything about anything. I was not a right fighter, even though I knew I was right. He's my redeemer. He's my friend. He's the one that will take care of things. He allows things so that we can go into places we could never go before. And if we go in there to prove a point... And, and you've not checked the motive of your heart. Your heart might be, I'm right. I'm mighty Christian. I got it all. And I'm going to let you know. And the truth is going to set you free. It's not going to set you free unless it's brought by the Spirit of God. Okay. And the Spirit of God is love. Because of that meeting, we have had favor. We've walked many years with them now. It's changed. There's ebbs and flows, but it doesn't matter. We care. We care. God placed Ray in there because he cares. And he cares an anointing on his life that I don't carry, that he can bring in there daily. He places people in there, and there's anointings on you all in your places, your sphere of influence that he can use, places I can't go, places I don't understand. But what he wants to do is he wants, he wants to bless you and strengthen you according to his riches, through his might and his spirit and your inner man so that when you walk in to places, they see him and not you. And they say, why are you so different? What is it about you? Why do you, why do you, why are you? I don't get it. There's something different about you. And all of a sudden, the door of opportunity opens up for you to share the mystery of the gospel, the simplicity of his love through you. But the motive of your heart has always got to be him. And sometimes in our flesh, it's him, but we come about it the wrong way. And we come about it, we don't realize that we're hurting people. I know. God has convicted me. I'll never forget several years ago, I was at a place and I was sitting with the Lord and I was, I was just ministering. He was ministering to me and I was away from here. And, and all of a sudden, God showed me this about me. And I just cried like a baby. And in those tears, we were repentance. And I didn't have to come home and repent to everybody, but it changed me. Why? Because my filter got out of the way. And his filter took that place. And from that day forward, I'm not saying that I've not hurt people. Um, but I think most people know my intent is not, not to hurt. But I pray that everything that I do filters through him. And I want to release that on you this morning. I want to give this away. Everything that God gives me, I want to give to you. I don't want to hold anything back. I don't want to be special and important. I want to give it all to you. I'm so excited for River of Life and what God's going to do in this body and through his people. It was so amazing for me to sit back on Wednesday night in the back of the room and just take pictures. And yes, I was here to guide and direct and to hear God, but I didn't do anything. And there's more of that coming. It's amazing. We weren't ready for that four years ago. And sometimes we want to go around the process and we just want to go out and develop our own thing. You can do that. You have my blessing to do that if that's what you want to do. But I'll never forget the advice 
that Gamaliel, the, that the great man of wisdom, a lawyer in the old in the New Testament, and you know, and they were coming against the disciples. They wanted to kill him. And he said, "Listen, how many? I'm just going to put it, paraphrase it." He says, this person raised up and they had followers. This person raised up and they had followers. This person raised up and they had followers. But when they died or when they fell, they all scattered. Listen, if this is God, you're going to be fighting against God if you come against this. And you don't want to do that. One of the greatest privileges of being a pastor, which I didn't know 10 years ago that I know today, is I feel like a proud mama. You know, like God just gave me these wonderful people to see the gold in them and not give up on them and walk with them and be truthful with them and do everything that I needed to do to a point now where I just see so much of them. I just want to see them get there. And I'm trying to figure out ways, not me and my flesh, but God, what do you want us to do? Because you want to use them. Not just out here, but in here. You you want to perfect them. You want to, you want to change them and tweak them and all those things that you do in our daily lives. One of the things in discipleship class, one of the places that we go is, is uh, prophecy. There's many, many wonderful gifts from the Holy Spirit. We talk about them. But one of the things is in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians, it tells us that, you know, that... Um, that we have these spiritual gifts, but in everything, of all things, de desire prophecy. And the reason prophecy is so important, um, that we can all prophesy, and this is different than a prophet, okay, because we can all prophesy. I don't think that you have to be a prophet to prophesy. But the motive behind prophecy um, in the church, because it's for the church, is to edify and build up the church, to comfort you to build you up, to help you get to the destination that you need to be. And if you're prophesying and you're bringing out all the negative stuff, you know, you got to filter that. you got to just stop that because that might be a little bit of your flesh. It doesn't mean you don't see the negative things in people, but what's important is maturity shows that you can get beyond the negative things that you see and allow Jesus Christ to use you anyways and love on them. That's one of the mysteries of Jesus. I love that because I've watched him do it in my own life. So he says, you know, that he, that, that we would be, that he would, sorry, that he would grant you and me according to the riches of his glory. So this brings glory to his name. When we walk in the love of Jesus, that brings glory to Jesus. Amen. And then to be strengthened with might through the spirit in your most inner man. Well, as we're strengthened with, by the Holy Spirit in might, all of a sudden his truth becomes greater than our truth. And all of a sudden we start to filter through love and all of a sudden we start to pour things out by the spirit of God instead of the spirit of Joyce or the spirit of Dan or the spirit of Edie. All of a sudden it's like, wow, you're walking in the might of Jesus Christ and he moves and he moves mountains. He'll do this for you in your personal walk. It's just that we haven't been taught. We haven't been taught in discipleship class. We're being taught and we're going deeper in things. It's just, and we're being taught here at this church, at River of Life. I don't know what's going on at any other church, but I do know this, that it won't stop the purpose that God has for River of Life. And River of Life isn't going to stop the purpose that God has for Faith Covenant. It doesn't matter. God said in the very beginning to me when we started this church, do not talk talk about other churches Amen. so I do not I try not to my best because it doesn't mean I don't have struggles with stuff but the thing is is if Christians are fighting against Christians why would anybody want to come to church if we're being if we're slandering the church down the road and, and that doesn't mean they're perfect we're not perfect we prophesy in part, we know in part, because Jesus Christ knows all things. But what's important is that when we come together, we build each other up. And don't be, you know, don't be crazy nuts about being fake. Don't do that. Be who you are. But hey, we want, we want Jesus Christ to become who he is in all of us so that when we are out in the world, they have a desire to be like you. Yes. 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 But if we're hurting each other, and we're hurting other churches, and we're slandering people, I can't stand Facebook. I want off Facebook so bad, but I can't because I'm connected to too many believers that have been in this church 
because I can't stand to see the things that I see because I know it breaks the heart of God. I want his heartbeat to beat here. I want him to bring in anybody he wants. I don't care what they look like. Amen. And I know your desire is the same or you wouldn't be here. I want the riches of his glory to be here, body-wise. Body-wise, this is the house of God. This isn't, this isn't the church, we're the church, and these are the things that are in us, the heavenly riches, the things that we can just give. But if we're right fighters and we're not filtering through love, why does anybody want to come? This world is hungry to be loved. This world is hungry. They want to be able to come in and tell you that they have an addiction problem and, and know that this is a place of safety. That you're not going to reject them. They want to be able to come and tell you they have a prison record. Will you let me come in? Can I come in and be part of your church? Uh, you know, could we? Would we? Do we? We do. But if our hearts, the intent of our heart is truly evil, we're saying one thing and doing another, this is what he's judging. This is what he's taking care of. He says that Christ in 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Yeah, baby. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in, in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. I want to do this with all the saints. I want to comprehend the width and the depth, right, of Jesus Christ. So this is the thing that... Remember, our inner man, okay, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And this is what I wrote down. I love this. First of all, let me just go here a second. I've been talking about faith a lot lately because, you know, it's impossible to please Jesus apart from faith. You can only be saved by grace, but it's still through faith. Everything is through faith. Everything is through faith. Faith is Jesus. I believe we all have a portion of it. That's not who he is, but it's part of who he is. So through is moving in one side and out the other. Through, the definition is moving in one side and out the other. An opening a channel or location, stepping boldly through the doorway. As soon as we opened the gate, they came streaming through. So through. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So we've got it. We have a part to play. Even in filtering the thing, in everything, it's through. Through faith. So Christ dwells in your heart through faith. You've got to open up. <coughs> You got to go beyond you. You got to understand and submit and surrender and know that his ways are higher than your ways. Put your thoughts down, your, your um, ambitions down, and allow the Christ to come in, but he can only come through your faith. Coming in the open door. He's coming in, and he's going to move now through you in and out, in and out. It is him. It is him. It is him. We just have to be open and surrendered, allowing his ways to be greater than our ways and his thoughts to be greater than our thoughts and to be different. And gosh, it should be like this. God, I, I know that I'm right. I know that I'm right. Uh, the word even says that I'm right. God, I'm going to go in there and tell them I'm right. He said, no, you're not. I want you to put a towel over your arm and go in as a servant. I'll be there. I'll be there. Make up your mind beforehand that you're not going to say anything. In that very hour, I will, according to the word, show up the Holy Spirit, and I will fill your mouth with words and wisdom that the enemy cannot even contradict nor resist. Amen. And that's exactly what happened. Because to me, they're authorities to me. I'm, I am subject to them. And I went in there humble. I was right. I was right. Even scripturally, I was right, but I'm subject to them because they trust us to watch over the people that they would send. So if I would have went in as a right fighter and I would have pushed my agenda and it was all scripturally true, if I wouldn't have listened to the Holy Spirit because his ways were greater than mine, the 6,000 people that came through these doors in the last seven years wouldn't have happened. 
His ways are greater than our ways. Amen. His thoughts are higher than ours. Like, yes, it's right. Yes, it's right. Yes, Joyce, you're right. You're right. I know you're bold. I know you'll do it because you'll do whatever I tell you to do. But I'm telling you to go in as a servant. I'm telling you to put your hand, put the towel over your hand. I'm going to tell you to go ask somebody to, for, to forgive you. Even if you don't, you've really done nothing wrong, you ask them. Because they need this. And it's more important that they hear you ask for forgiveness so that they can come into the kingdom of heaven and be freed of what's bonding them, bounding them, versus really who's right, who's wrong. Right? Forgiveness. Uh, in the circle this morning, we went around and asked God, or I asked people to um, shout out or say something that God, they have overcome with Jesus. And I heard forgiveness. And much of the way. And it was really funny because God has, has had me truly go to people, embrace them, and tell them I am sorry for everything. They're more important than me being right. Obviously, there's an offense somewhere. And I might not even know how it happened, but maybe I do. But even if I'm right, what if my I forgive you frees them? It should. And now they can come in to a closer walk with Jesus Christ. And why? Because of what the word says. Because in my inner man, he's flowing in me right now. So I'm going to go and do it. I'm going to humble myself. It doesn't matter. In Christ, it doesn't matter. Do not, <coughs> excuse me, how many people he could have held offense to that beat him, whipped him, put him on the cross? He said, Father. Forgive them. They know not what they do. Don't you know the people that are holding offenses against you? We should be saying the same thing. But yet maybe we need to go and say to them, forgive me. I don't know what, don't say I don't know what I did. Because that just wipes it away. Acknowledge their heart above yours. Acknowledge it. Because he acknowledged our hearts yeah. above his. Yeah. The mysteries of Jesus Christ. This is not what we do, but this is what he does. And he's given us this morning. I am so excited for Jesus. I am so excited that through faith, because I've opened my heart, he lives in me. And as long as I, through faith, every day allow him to be who he is, and I don't shut that door, he will get me through it. It is so hard to be that humble. It is so hard to go to places when you would just want to be just rigid and stand firm in the world when Jesus is saying, no, humble yourself. Esteem others better than you. You've got what you need to get to heaven. Maybe they don't. Maybe you're the ticket. I want to humble you because you don't realize that you're prideful in this area. And humbleness is a beautiful thing. Jesus is amazing. <laughs> yes. Okay, so almost done. So, so anyways, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. I believe that what I just shared with you is part of the comprehension of Jesus' depth and his width of his love. Because I would never think to do such a thing. You know the funny thing is, is Jesus will just come on me and do it because my I'm full of I'm full of him by faith. I, I I've opened up my heart. I want him to enter in me and through me. When I pray that God don't only come into me but go through me, these are the through. And the throughs are sometimes hard. Okay, through faith, I'm going to go over and forgive. Through faith, I'm going to welcome. Through faith, I'm going to bow. I'm subject. Why, am I su why was I subject to the authority of BDR? Because I said they entrusted us to bring their people here, that we would love them and take care of them, but we would follow their rules because they had rules. So in order for me to really see authority in heaven what this was my test but this is a free church I'm the leader I'm this God said you go in as a servant because you are a servant we all are but it made a difference 
I know it made a difference in many, 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 many people's lives because I keep hearing their testimonies and where they're at with Jesus and what God is doing, and it's amazing. The same thing is in you, and you, and you, all of us. His ways are, are greater than our ways. You know, I, that wouldn't have been the way I chose, but I sure liked it. You know, the thing about the Holy Spirit is that when you obey him, there's such a, a grace that's released to you from Jesus, an empowerment that you're not able to do yourself, grace I'm talking about, but only by the power of God. And it's so released in you that you truly embrace the moment and you love the people and you love the person. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Because I've walked through it. I have apologized in my mind where I felt I didn't do anything wrong, but because God asked me to. But when I embraced and I spoke what I felt God wanted me to, I felt it. I meant it. It filtered through love because I care about them more than my pride or my place of being right. <sighs> Just release that to all of y'all. <laughs> Whoa. I... It's amazing. Rooted and grounded in love. That's what flowed through me because it came from the river of life, which is the throne of God that flowed through me and flows through me and flows through you. And maybe that in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints. This is for all of us. What is the width and the length, the depth and the height so that to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Knowledge would have supported my decisions if I would have been disobedient to Jesus. But his love, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. It's amazing. Yes, amen. It's amazing. Amen. So now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever Amen. you all have a capability of loving and reaching people I never could but maybe it's going to come in a different way I believe that what he had me do and what he has me do has come in weird ways, ways that I wouldn't expect Jesus to be winning um, souls and whatnot because, but when we are the church and we, the church is where the, the God dwells and God is love, it's life. It's just life. The life of God working through all of us. There's so many things that we all have, even in, in the prophecy and, and the gifts that we have, and God moves through us for healing and deliverance and all that, but it all should filter through love, not pride, not, oh, this is what we do. It's never what we do. It's always what he does. Amen. I just want to release to everybody this morning just a, a, a greater depth and a desire to go after him and allow him to change your mind where we've been stiff-necked. He's amazing. Shay, what was that first song that you had me um, play? Come, River, come. What was it? For, um, it was. Can you go back? and Because it's in there. It's under the, help them find it. We're going to close with that song, and I don't know the name of it. It's a fast song. But I like it. It's not, it's not Make Me a River. It's a different one. It was for pre-service that Shay sent me this morning. Um, so listen, Lord, first of all, we give you all the honor, praise, and glory. And God, where, where we have maybe failed in some of these areas, Lord, we ask that you just forgive us. Thank you for replacing the lie with your truth. Thank you for replacing pride with humility. Thank you for replacing... Things that we filter through, judgment, critical spirit, whatever it is, God, thank you for removing that lens and putting the lens of love, the filter of love there. Oh, God, 
I thank you for every person in here and the desire they have to run after you. I pray that you open more and more doors for each and every person, God. I pray that you anoint them so they can serve you. I thank you, God, for the life that's in each and every one of us, that as they go out and reach the world, the world will receive from them. That, God, they will walk in a wisdom that we've never walked in out there, Father, so that you will fill our mouths with words and wisdom in that very hour that we don't have to premeditate what we're going to say and do because when we trust you, you show up and you do the job because it's all you. Right. But that in the meantime, we t study and show ourselves approved and walk in relationship with you on a daily basis. That, Father God, that you do what you want to do in and through us as we just surrender. And through that faith, opening ourselves up, through that faith, opening that door so that you can enter and be all that you are, Lord Jesus, come. Come this morning. Whew. Set us free. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. Okay, so I need to, I, I forget your first name, Kenny's sister. Teresa. Teresa. So as I was up here, Teresa, I could just see the love of Jesus on you. And I could see, like, I felt like God was opening up your eyes uh, to some greater truths, some truths that you've always kind of felt here, and that um, God's opening up your eyes to a greater degree. As, and the other thing that I noticed about you is the depth of your love for Jesus. Most people don't see really how deep that love really is in you, but it is there. But I want you to know that he sees it, that he sees it. And sometimes even through your quiet and you're subdued sometimes in certain areas of your life that Jesus knows your heart and he loves your heart it's pure do you do everything right no but your heart running after him it's pure and God says don't compare yourself to anybody else he's with me every day of the week amen that's for you this morning yeah Whew. Teresa I told you I was born <laughs> It was the Holy Spirit is just shining on you. Oh, I know. Okay, so I just want to, just before I move on is, um, yeah. So um, your daughter-in-law, what's her name? Beth. Beth? Right. So Beth, uh, first of all, I just want to just release. I, can I just touch you just for a second? So I just want to just take your hand. And I, I just want to release love to you this morning. And I just want to tell you thank you. And not from me, but from heaven. Thank you for times of loving when, you know, you, you may be in your flesh, you didn't want to love, but you've given of yourself. And I want you to know that Jesus sees that, that God sees that. I want to encourage you to do it more. I want to, you, to encourage you not to fear man and not to be in fear of what people think about you. He says that you're wonderfully and beautifully made. It's very evident to heaven and it's very evident to us. You are a blessing not only to your family and your husband and your children, but also to heaven. And you go heavenward. You serve the Lord with everything that is within you. He will give you the ability. Sometimes you hold back because you wonder. But Jesus says, you step out in faith and I'll do it through you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, God. Just want to make sure before we go any further. Um, thank you, Lord. Okay. Let's stand up, everybody.